All right, we are out here in the woods today, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about trapping, a lost art, a truly lost art. Trapping is sort of one of the basic foundations that this country was built on. People used to use furs as money, basically, <clears throat> to exchange for goods and services. And, uh, you know, back in the old days, there was, uh, they didn't know that much about conservation and wildlife management. We know a lot more now. This being 2019, we've come a long way in 200 years. That's about how long ago your real mountain men and, and, and trappers sort of did their thing. Uh, we're, you're actually coming with me on the trap line today. We're, we're checking the trap line. I tried to do this video on uh, Facebook Live a few days ago, and I kept losing my signal. So I figured the best way to do this, I, I'm sorry I can't bring you along with me live as it happens. But um, we'll just go ahead and make this video, and then I'll upload it. And it'll be just as exciting because you're seeing things as I'm seeing things. It's just not live. But we're going to talk a little bit about wildlife management, conservation, the basics of trapping. The, primarily, the type of trapping that I'm doing at this point in my trapping career is raccoon. Now, as you see here, have here you can see that's that's a little cylinder and that is called a DP raccoon trap DP is short for dog proof and the reason they're called that is because that little cylinder there if you have if you're a little critter like a raccoon or a possum uh, those are basically the most common things that you're going to catch in these kind of traps you have like a little human-like hand that, uh, you know, with a thumb and it's sort of... Raccoons love to reach down in things and, and explore and reach for food. I do apologize for the airplanes. For some reason, every day around this time, they do their, um, their drills where they're constantly flying airplanes over here. So huh. it's not as remote as I would like to be, but it's a, a short drive from home. Anyway, they'll reach down in there. If we have a, a, a critter caught in any of these traps, or any of the traps are empty, I will um, pick it up, and I'll show you exactly how it works, the mechanics of it inside. But basically, they reach down inside, and there's a little lever on the very bottom. And, you know, raccoons are greedy. They'll get all the surrounding food. They'll get all the food inside the trap, and then they get to that lever. And when, when they're reaching for those last few pieces of marshmallow or cat food, they'll pull up with their hand and when they do that they hit that little trigger mechanism and then there's this arm that comes across real quick and just gets their hand and they they can't get their hand out and then they're caught in the trap and then this trap as you can see is chained to a wire and the wire is wrapped around a heavy tree branch <clears throat> there's other ways you can do this too there's a um, like a big piece of rebar that you can bound that, that you can pound into a stake that you can put on the end. That's you know if you're if you are trapping or where there is nothing to tie off your traps to. Anyway, okay, so th we have 17 traps put out here today, and uh, we're going to check all 17 of them. Um, there's a very good chance we're not going to get anything. It happens sometimes, it's just like when you go fishing or you go hunting. Sometimes you don't catch anything. <laughs> So anyway, this is trap number one, and I'm going to talk a little more, a little bit more about uh, wildlife conservation and wildlife management as we're checking this trap line, and I'm going to also tell you some basics as we go along about trapping. Uh, so the animals that that people trap are very uh, carefully managed. Okay, some of the animals that trappers catch are raccoon, possum, uh, there's uh, muskrat, fox, wolf, coyote, uh, fishers, which is a type of a very large-sized weasel, 
uh, mink, which is another kind of weasel. Uh, Martin. Uh, bobcat. Lynx. All these animals. Now, you, sometimes, you know, and, 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 and these animals are primarily uh, trapped and harvested for their fur. Now, you may think that that is incredibly heartless and cruel, but I'll tell you a couple things. First of all, not all trappers trap just for fur. Like me, for example. I eat, I actually eat some of the animals that I get. Some of these raccoons, you can actually eat raccoon. Hey, let me tell you something. If you're in a survival situation, you'd be surprised what you can eat. But raccoon is actually quite tasty if you prepare it just right. Well, a lot of people, why would you want to eat a, a trash animal like that, like a raccoon? Don't they carry rabies? Aren't they just, you know, horrible? It's like eating a rat. Well, that's all on your perspective. You cannot get... You cannot catch rabies by eating an animal that has rabies. Um, there's a few factors to consider. Before you eat any animal, when you cut an animal open, and you're, of course you're gonna see its uh, internal organs, there's a few things to look for. Okay, so we're approaching trap number two. Uh, you don't wanna eat an animal that has an off uh, odor, like a really, really foul odor. Of course, most of the time when you cut open some of these larger size animals, you know, things like like squirrel, you can cut them open all day, you're never going to smell anything, unless there's something wrong with them. But when you start cutting open larger animals like raccoon, coyote, and deer, there, look here, so, so we need to add some bait. Some of the bait has been taken out of this trap. Where's the other trap? Okay, oh, there's a lot of bait that's been taken out of that trap right there. I'll show you how the trap works with that one. So some, some things to look for when you are uh, uh, cutting an animal open and, and you're examining his internal organs and the meat, you can look for um, abnormal discolorations. You can look for spots. Uh, you can look for unusually bad smells. Um, most of the time, what smells in these larger animals commonly, uh, even if there's nothing wrong with them, is their stomach the contents of their stomach and their intestines because that's like partially and sometimes fully digested food plus you know you're dealing with the bowels so you're smelling some of the animals feces and urine so it's a combination of very normal foul smelling things let me uh you know I'm, this trap here has a pretty decent amount of food still in it so i'm not going to uproot this one and show you how the trap works so if you are uh, eating these animals that you harvest, you want to look for that. <clears throat> a lot of it is also um, dependent upon the animal's diet. What they eat can also impact the flavor of the meat. Bears, for example. If you eat bear, I don't know why anyone would not eat a bear just because it's a bear and that's not something that's commonly eaten. Uh, I have never tried bear, but from what I hear, it can be delicious. A lot of that depends on what the bear's primary diet is. If you eat, if you try to eat a bear, that ha I'll explain to you step by step what I'm doing here in like other traps. If you eat a bear whose primary diet is salmon, the meat is not going to really be all that great tasting. It's going to take on a bit of a uh, fishy flavor so you know and it's not just a certain kind of bear that eats salmon bears are omnivores which means you know just depending on their territory the time of year the um, availability of food is, is going to have a huge impact on what they eat now if you have a um, bear that has fed primarily on berries and uh they, they do eat a lot of berries and plant matter, then actually the, the uh, meat can actually not only take on sort of a sweet uh, berry-like flavor, but the meat can actually even have a slight purple tinge to it from the color of the berries. Now this, see, so some critter is coming around here and not, 
um, getting all the food. They're just eating some of the food. So it leads me to believe that I might be putting too much food around the bait. And they're not curious or hungry enough to empty the trap out, which is kind of what they need to do to trigger these traps. Uh, okay. I usually put one or two marshmallows right on the top, too, because I, I just think that in the animal's mind, the cat dog food mixture that I'm using is good. It's delicious. But the marshmallow sort of the dessert, and they don't want to miss out on that. Plus, it's, it's brightly colored. It's sort of an attractant. Raccoons are very curious. Sometimes people even paint their DP. Their, that's what these are called, dog-proof raccoon traps. They even paint them bright white just to attract the attention of raccoons. I choose not to do that because I do not want to attract the attention of people that may come along and steal my traps or tamper with them or whatever. I'd rather them be a little bit more camouflage and just let the, the food and the scent be the attractant, you know? And I put a couple of, uh, oh, I was going to show you how the traps, well, I'll do it with another one. Uh, I also put a couple of marshmallows on the very bottom, too, because I figured, hey, you know, it's like the dessert. Let me reach and grab those last couple of marshmallows, because marshmallows are sweet and delicious. <clears throat> so anyway, getting back to what I was saying, there are certain signs that you can look for if you're knowledgeable, if you've done this enough times, uh, to know if the meat is safe to eat or not. And getting back to rabies, as long as you cook the meat to an internal temperature of somewhere between 160 and 165 degrees, you have nothing to worry about as far as the rabies virus. I could see all a couple of my different traps here. Now this one here, here, I'm gonna show you how these DP, dog-proof raccoon traps work on this one, okay? So I carry around this big old container. It's a 50-50 dog food, cat food mixture. So what I'm gonna do, as you can see, some of the food is missing. Okay, so that is an empty trap. Now, what I'm going to do is disengage the trap right now. You'll see see that you see that right there that little thing that snaps back so there's a little lever down in there Let's see if I can fix the camera so you can see it I don't know if you can see it with the lighting but I'm flipping it up and down and on the back side of it it's this little lever right here okay so if this if this is pulled on the inside if that is pulled up okay if that little lever is pulled up by the animal, then what that does is it pulls that up and pushes that down. And when that's pushed down, this lever is released. And this little thing here, it's normally in that position. And when that lever is released, it real, real, real quick goes, whoosh, I'll do it in slow motion, boom, see? But it normally happens very, very fast. Boom, okay? Now this is this spring is incredibly strong, and once your hand is caught in there, you are not going to get it out, and you're going to be attract uh, trapped. Okay, let me show you how to. Um, there's a special tool that you can use that makes resetting these a lot easier, but I'm just going to do it by hand and show you. You squeeze that down. You, oh, sorry, I'm trying to do this, holding the camera. Here's the back part. Okay, you want to get that little lever there and put it right there, okay? Now, that is a set trap. When the animal reaches his hand in there, he's going to make this little device here go down, which will release that, which will release the spring, and boom, he'll be caught. So you understand. And the reason they call it a dog proof is because dogs' hands, first of all, their dogs' hands are usually too big to fit in this trap. And then, even if you get a little small dog like a Chihuahua or a Jack Russell or something, and he is able to put his hand down in there, he can't 
do this with his hand, like a possum or a raccoon. And he can't really grab that lever on the bottom and pull and activate the trap. Um, their nose, put, they can put their nose in it all day and it's not going to trigger it. You have to pull up that little lever. Now they sell more sensitive traps like this that are push-pull, which means if you push down on the lever or pull, it's going to snap and it's going to, it's still dog proof though because most dogs can't fit their paws down in there. These are great, these are very humane traps, so I'm going to put a couple marshmallows in first. I mean, I'll show you what that looks like. I put two or three marshmallows down on the very bottom. And as you can see, once he's eaten everything, and he's reaching in there for more and more, he'll see them, those marshmallows or smell them. And he'll want to get them. But he pretty much has to empty this trap to activate it. Okay? You sprinkle a little bit around outside. Everybody does it different. Some people say, don't fill your traps up all the way. Some people say, have them overflowing. Don't sprinkle dog food around the trap. Sprinkle a lot of dog food around. Everybody has their own technique, and it's just through trial and error and the trapper's own preference. All right, so we have a couple of marshmallows down in there, and we're going to put a couple of marshmallows on the top there. I'm going to put a couple more marshmallows on the outside just so they can get a taste and see. Now see how attractive that looks? Now the third and final step that you want to do I have this lure. This is a mixture of fish oil and um, uh, grape jelly, okay, or any kind of jelly. And what I like to do is <clears throat> sprinkle this. Um, this is an old sriracha bottle, but I just this, the squeeze thing never really works very good on this. I think it gets gunked up with uh, grape seeds. But you don't want to pour this on your trap because then your trap gets all sticky and gummed up and it becomes a real pain in the butt to clean. So I just pour a little bit around the trap. And the raccoons have an incredibly good sense of smell. So as they're walking by, hopefully, I'm not exactly sure if I want to keep this trap in this location. I'm starting to, what I'm starting to do is with all my traps, if I've not caught an animal in a certain location in a certain period of time, then I want to move the trap. Now, if I've caught an animal in a trap, then I know that that trap is effective and it's a good spot to keep the location. Now, right here, you can see that is called animal scat or animal poop, whatever you would like to call it. And this is actually old. This is a, probably a couple of weeks old right now, but there's a lot of seeds in there. This is raccoon poop right here. Raccoon poop. That's what it looks like. So the raccoons are kind of helping uh, disperse the seeds and getting new uh, vegetation to grow. So raccoons are not all bad. They are nature's cleanup crew. But now the reason that we trap them, aside from their fur, is that they there is such a pro prolifer proliferation of raccoons. There's so many of them that they need to be managed by man. Man is smarter than wildlife, so we have taken it upon ourselves to be stewards of wildlife management. So one animal doesn't die out, doesn't become extinct, and we sort of level the playing field. Um, here in Virginia, where I live, um, and this, at least in my particular region of Virginia, east of the Blue Ridge uh, Mountains, raccoon, because there is such a proliferation. There's so many raccoon. Uh, they have, the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries has dictated that there is uh, to be an open season on raccoon year-round. You can trap raccoon 365 days a year. 
because they are considered a nuisance animal. What makes them a nuisance? I'll tell you. I want to point something out here first, though. If you are going to be a trapper, and I think this is pretty much true in all states, if you follow this chain, you look, there's a little temporary tag here. I just had that until I was able to put permanent tags on here, but I have a permanent tag on here, too. This is made of copper, and this basically has my trapper ID number on it. So that if a um, game warden were to ever come around, he would know exactly who these traps belong to. It also lets other trappers know. <sighs> I don't know what the point of that is, but it's, it's important because you need to be held accountable. And if you have set a, there are certain species of animals, certain types of traps that you're not allowed to use, and say, say you have a, a trap that's set out for mink or marten. And you have that out with your tag on it and it's not the right time of year. It's not the right season for that particular animal. Then the game warden, or as they call them now, conservation officers, come across your trap. They'll know who is going to be in trouble. Who is to be held accountable. Us trappers need to be held accountable for our actions. And if you're trapping out of season, or if you're not using the right type of trap, or an improper placement of bait, or whatever it might be, you are in violation of that law, and you have just made yourself what's called a poacher. A poacher is somebody who traps, or takes, or kills, hunts uh, animals that are not allowed to be trapped or are doing it out of season or are not properly licensed. Man, I'm talking a lot, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just I want to impart this information and share with you. Probably, if there's any trappers that are watching this video, uh, they already know all these rules. Okay, now I want to tell you why raccoons and possums are considered nuisance animals. Why there is an open season on raccoons 365 days a year. Basically why the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries wants you to trap as many raccoons. I don't, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there's a limit on how many you can trap a day. You know, there are professional trappers, meaning this is all they do, that have hundreds, if not thousands, of traps. Now, they probably have people working for them because there's no way one man could go out and check a thousand traps, you know, in, in a day. Um, these, these kind of traps that, that people use where you catch the animal alive, which is the kind of trap I'm using today, I'm going to set a trap, though, later that uh, it's called a cona bear that, that actually kills the animal instantly if they trigger the trap. I'll show you how that all works later. Anyway, if you capture your animals alive, if you're using these catch-alive traps, which is what I am using, then you are legally required, and I believe this is in all 50 states, to check your traps every single day, no matter what. And if you think about it, that makes sense, because. You know, you have an animal that you could have caught overnight or any, any time in that 24-hour period. And it's not fair to the animal to leave him out there. You know, he could die of, of dehydration, starvation. Well, probably not starvation, not 24 hours, but uh, exposure to the cold or to the, to the heat. You know, I mean, that's inhumane. So it's all about being humane. Nobody, no trapper or hunter is supposed to do anything in the woods that's inhumane in any way. That's why they have tried to set up these parameters for these rules for people to follow. So you check your trap every 24 hours. The only exception to that is um, if you know a bad storm is coming or it's rained or something. You, can, you go out there and you disengage all your traps. You, you can leave your traps there as long as they're not set. No animal can get caught in it. And then you can give yourself a break for a couple days until the storm passes by. 
or whatever. <clears throat> so getting back to why raccoons are considered a nuisance animal and what that is. Hang on a second. Sorry, trying not to blow a snot rocket on my camera. All right, this is a uh, there's a trap that we're going to look at over here that I just put in. I just moved it to this new location yesterday, and I, I don't really feel confident about this spot. I like the fact that it's at the base of a fallen tree. However, it's not on any kind of animal route or path, so I'm just relying on the animal either accidentally stumbling upon it. Can you see the? Oh, yeah. It's right there. It's kind of camouflaged, but it's right there. A little cylinder tube. That one doesn't really need messed with. Uh, but there's, you know, the animal might accidentally walk over here and stumble upon this and smell it, but it's not really... That's the one that I might move. I already moved it. It used to be... Oh, excuse me. It used to be right here. And I moved it. Uh, right there. Alright, so we have actually checked six traps out of a total of 17 traps. Now, I, I did a live video uh, last week. It was a live Facebook video, and it breaks my heart that the video was, I didn't save the video, the video was not broadcasted properly. And the thing that makes me upset about it is I caught the biggest raccoon over here at the base of this fallen tree. Biggest raccoon I ever caught in my life. I should have waited. And I was recording that live and I lost that video. I'm so bummed about it. Let's see if there is a raccoon here. No, there is not. No, it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. I still, and because I caught a raccoon here, you can see the trap right there. I feel that this is a great spot. Now, I honestly feel that that giant raccoon I caught lived in that little hole there underground that's a perfect place to take up residence if you're a raccoon protected from the elements a nice little hideaway all right so we have checked seven traps the reason raccoons are a nuisance animal keep, is because they are devastating to ground nesting birds they also carry disease mainly rabies which can be spread to children, adults, pets, and other animals. Uh, yeah, this isn't looking so good here. Here's another trap. This is trap number eight right here. It hasn't been messed with at all. I could spray more scent, but I'm not going to do that. And here's another one right on the bank of this. Or I'm trying to find it in the view. There, there it is, right there. Another little trap there. Okay. And then there's another trap over here that is not sprung. Right there. And that's full. That hasn't been messed with. I'm going to leave that one be. Yeah. If you have any questions or comments or you want to critique my trapping, give me some tips. I always love that. So this one here has definitely been messed with. I actually caught a raccoon here. See the reason? See see all these long, this used to all be, all filled up right here, but I caught a raccoon here. And he cleared out this whole area. So I still put my trap there. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and refill this one a little bit. Okay. A little bit more dog food around it. Uh, they they can be devastating to ground nesting birds. They can they carry disease. There's so many raccoons. The Department of Game and Inland Fisheries has put a uh, a year round season on them because when an animal when there's an overpopulation of an animal. I hate when this thing gets gummed up. They fall prey to overpopulation, which can lead to starvation. Uh, disease can be a real problem when a species is overpopulated. 
diseases can run ramp, ramp, rampant. Alright. Oh, I want to, I'm sorry, I want to put a little bit more food in the trap itself, too. Let's see here. Okay. This is just a mixture of El Cheapo dog and cat food. And you want to know a little secret? This is mainly going out to my fellow trappers. You know where I get my dog and cat food from? For free. An, basically an unlimited supply of dog and cat food. I'm not sure if you're familiar with dumpster diving, but if you drive behind your shopping centers that have pet stores in them, Petco, PetSmart, whatever pet store you live near, go out back and you go to their dumpster and they have to throw out dog food and cat food that is expired or if the package is damaged in any way. And man, I find bags and bags of it. And there's nothing wrong with it. You can even, I have even used it to feed my own dogs and cats. And some of it's like real expensive, blue buffalo, iams, stuff. But it doesn't matter what you use here. If I, I like to use a combination. It might be better to just use cat food. But that's not as, as um, easy to find. And, you know, if, if, if you could pick, you want to get some sort of fish-flavored cat food. I like to mix it in with dog food because raccoons love dog food too. But, you know, what they really love is that fish-flavored cat food. I saw this video where this guy, um, basically what he did was he, when he cooks bacon, he saves his bacon grease, which I have done for years because I cook with it. But he saves some, and he'll get a big jug like this full of dog food, and he'll pour about eh, about half a cup of bacon grease in here, just leftover bacon grease. You know, he'll let it cool down a bit. You don't want it to be scorching hot. And then what you do, you know, and once the dog food container is filled up about this, maybe just a little over halfway, you pour about half a cup of uh, just bacon grease in here, then you shake this up vigorously. And what that does, it basically coats every single piece of food in here with um, with bacon grease. And that does a couple of wonderful things. It makes it smell like bacon to the raccoon, which is, I mean, everybody loves the smell of bacon, especially humans and raccoons. And with this cold season here, which is when you want to be trapping, the bacon grease sort of hardens up and creates almost like a wax coating on your dog food, on your cat food. And it makes it semi-water resistant. But if it rains, normally if it rains on this stuff, the water just swells this up and it loses its scent, it loosens, loses its potency, and it's not that much of an attractant anymore. Who wants to eat wet, soggy dog food? Your dog probably won't even eat that unless he's starving. But the bacon grease, like I said, sort of creates like a little coat of wax completely encasing each nugget of food and that makes it you know the water sort of beads off of it as long as it's cold out and it's created that waxy coat so it smells like bacon it's water resistant that's a great idea I have not yet done that I'm gonna once once I um, you know re go out come out here and reset all my traps I want to do that I want to coat all my food with bacon grease and see you know, anything that, that ups the odds of catching that animal. <clears throat> so that's a great idea. I saw another video where a guy coated all his food with grape jelly. And that, to me, kind of a good idea, but would also create a tremendous mess. Here's another trap. Let's see, where is it on the viewfinder? Can't see it. Let's see the tag. Oh, there it is. Sorry, right there. That one doesn't really need to be messed with. There's a little path down here that I might move some of my uh, traps that are not in that good a spot. I might move them down there somewhere along the path. Raccoons create these cool little paths. It's awesome because you can tell where they've been. And you can tell it's a raccoon path as opposed to a deer path because, you know, a deer path, a deer is going to leave a path it's obvious, you know, the full size of a deer has been through there. But if it's a low to the ground, under a bunch of thickets and shrubbery and stuff, and it looks like, hey, there's no way a deer could have walked through here without 
you know, pushing back all the branches and trees and everything. Um, you can tell it was a low, this is a path right here. This is a frequently used wildlife path. Now, it's hard to tell if this is a raccoon path or a deer path because all, everything's cleared all the way up. It's just going to be almost like a little tunnel if it's uh, used only by raccoons. <coughs> Alright, here's another one here. Looks like we might need to... Oh, no, we can leave this one be. See this one here? Let's see. Trying to tr keep track of how many. Seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is trap number twelve. We have five more traps to check. We haven't caught a single thing today, gang. That's kind of a bummer. I'm a little bit excited though because yesterday when I came out here, I moved a couple of traps into what I thought would be a better location. So we haven't gotten to those yet. Here's another trap over here. That looks like the marshmallows have been taken and the surrounding dog food. Cat food. I'm going to put some more. Each one of my tra uh, traps, it's the law, has one of these tags on it. And uh, you can order those online. I, I get most of my trapping supplies through a website called F&T Post. And they have everything. F and T, I think it's fntpost.com or something like that. Or just if you just Google F ampersand T post, you'll find it. And it, it's got just so many awesome things. I get a catalog from them sent to me. So, all right. So we're gonna put a little bit more surrounding dog food here, cat food, and uh, a few more marshmallows. It's like. The, the deer could have come along and eaten the uh, marshmallows because deer do love marshmallows. I know that for a fact. Okay. Well, we're coming across these next. Let me think. Hang on. What did I say? 12. Let me, let me do a little re recalculation. I think we have three traps left. So this is trap number 12, right? All right wait a minute. Let me think for a second. I think there's three traps left. Yeah. All right, that one's reset properly. So, people say, well, you know, you're a fur trapper, which means most of the time you're not going to eat the animal, you're just trapping them for their fur. And that seems horrible. But the reason that's a good thing is because, you know, first of all, fur is a renewable, natural resource that looks better, lasts longer. Okay, here's one of my new traps. And also, you are helping control a nuisance um, population. I mean, you know, if you get a, a real problem, say there are no trappers in a certain community who don't come out here and utilize the fur of the animal, then you know what you have? You have people that are hired by your state, by the Virginia Department of Game and Animal Fishing. They'll come out here and they'll set traps. And if they don't, if they're not fur uh, collectors, they just shoot the animals and dispose of the body because they need to control that population. Whether you're taking their fur or not, these animals need to be managed and regulated and taken out if there's too many of them. So at least the fur trappers are out here using a very useful part of the animal. They're, it's not going to waste. And uh, oh, a big heron, a big blue heron over there. Okay, so here's a, here's a new trap. I just put it in this spot. Now it has been, it has been, uh, some food has been taken out of it. I'm gonna put some more in, of course. And put some around it. Spread that out a little bit. Okay, so get some marshmallows on here. This is fun though. I, I love it. It's a passion of mine. I'm like a kid on, on every night that I have these traps set. When I go to bed at night, I'm like a kid on Christmas Eve. I'm so excited. I'm thinking, hey, you know, is there, there going to be? You never know. 
you could have a crappy day and not catch anything like we're doing so far today. Or you can have a, I caught three in one day, which is amazing. So this one's ready to go. I could, could add a little bit of scent. I might do that on the way out. All right, we have two more traps to check. Two more. All right, let's see. Let's see, okay, there's one. Nothing's in it. It has been, it has been uh, messed with, though. So you can tell by some of these paths in the woods that deer did not walk through here. These are low to the ground paths. The vegetation up high is not crushed or trampled or anything. It's just like a little tunnel that these critters make. So that's good, you know? These animals, if they get used to these traps being in here, even if there's, I didn't catch anything today, they're gonna be like, hey, you want some food? There's this trap, there's this um, little place over here where I know there's food. I went there last night and got some. There might be some food in there today and they'll kind of come back and revisit these traps over and over, uh, um, and eventually you'll get something. You can't get frustrated, you know, it's just like fishing or hunting, you know, honestly, to me, it's just awesome to be out here in, in the woods, you know. I love just being out here. I get bummed when I have to leave, whether I catch an animal or not, I get bummed when my time out here is over. Like, I only have one more trap to check, and then I, I have to leave the woods. <laughs> Well, I don't have to, but I do have some stuff I need to do today. So we have one more trap to check. Uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, there it is, and there's nothing in it. So today's a bust, guys. I'm sorry, this is not the most exciting trapping video. Um, oh, it, did look, it does look like an animal visited this one, though. Because there's no marshmallows, and some of the dog food missing. Alright, so I'm just going to throw a few more marshmallows down here because there's still a bit of uh, dog food around it. One more. Okay. So that is why I do what I do. I love it. And then when it's time to call an animal or dispatch an animal, you know, so many people get bent out of shape and are offended by the word kill when it's time to kill an animal. So people come up with these other little bit softer, more sensitive words to cull an animal, to dispatch an animal, to um, take care of, you know. But when it's done, when they're in these traps, it's great because you can walk right up to the animal and you can do your shot placement. You can use either a 22 or a, uh, even a, a high-powered air rifle will do the trick. And you, you point that muzzle of that gun right exactly where you know it's going to do the most damage and, and cause a pretty much instantaneous death. Look at this. As I was walking through, my hat got caught on a tree, on a thorn. That's funny. See, I didn't even know it was off my head. Yeah. That's the funniest thing that's happened in this video. I, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm, I'm talking a little bit too much, but I am just trying to cram a lot of information into this little video and, and enlighten you and educate you a little bit about a trapper's life and a trapper's world. Well, like I said, there are trappers that do this for a living, and my trap line is a joke compared to... Here's a nice little spot right here. I want to set up this last... Um, this last trap here. Let me think if I want to put it over here. Huh. Let's see. I'm thinking about putting it right there. Hmm. Yeah, I think I will. Alright, so I'm going to set up this trap. Now, this is nothing I have to put my camera somewhere else and you're going to have to watch me from a little bit of a different angle on a tree or something here. Bumping it, I have to look 
to see, make sure that you can see me okay. Okay. Let's see, that ought, to, that ought to do it right there. Okay. Hey y'all, how you doing here? Alright, so the type of trap that I'm going to set up is called a conibear. A conibear trap. It's made by a company called Duke. Now this is a deadly trap. Um, you need to make sure that if you set this kind of trap, you're going to set it in a place where their dogs don't come. Now I'm in a pretty remote section of the woods here where um, I don't believe that there are, are going to be any dogs. But this is a kind of bear trap, and when the, the animal triggers this trap, it closes and snaps. It's like a, a, a small body trap, and it usually closes around their neck, and it's so powerful that it snaps their neck. They die instantly. Any animal that gets, gets caught in here that's small enough to sort of stick their nose through and trigger that trap is going to have instant death. If, it, if they don't die, like, seriously, instantaneously, it will only be a matter of seconds. So, we're going to set this up. It's going to be a little tricky, uh, because um, there's nothing really to, to root this to. I don't know what I'm going to... Anyway, this is a, a, a little bit of a, a tricky trap to, to set. You can set it by hand by just pushing these springs together, but you're going to kill yourself. <coughs> so I have this little tool here, specifically designed to set these traps. And then there's a, it's a double spring um, activated, or double spring, that's... That's how much power goes into it. So I'm going to work on this. Um, I'll, I need to set the trap, and then I can worry about placing it exactly where, where I want it to be. I'm, I'm probably not going to talk too much, because I need to focus and concentrate what I'm doing here. So bear with me. Get this uh, special tool here. this, and that brings the springs together. You see how that works? Safety loop. A little safety loop on. Do this on each side. Take your time, you do it right. Speed. All right, so that's one side. I'm gonna do the other side. Same way. <clears throat> you have to engage both springs. Safety's on. You're in good shape. You still want, you want to be very careful, especially in a dealing, even with dealing with a trap this size. This is called a 220 uh, Conibear body grip trap. 
twenty. They go up, and then there's a three thirty. That I believe that's the next size up. This little thing here is the trigger mechanism. If the animal rushes against it or walks, attempts to stick his head through it, that's what triggers it. And uh, I'm not going to go through how to set this because I would need to have a cameraman zooming in and watching the particulars and everything I'm doing. And I'm just doesn't become dangerous until you take those uh, safety clasps on. Okay. There's three different, or two different settings you can put it on here. One where the animal just touches it, and then there's another one where they, they have to put a little bit more pressure on it. Animal will walk through there. They'll hit that trigger, and that's all she wrote. I like how that looks. That is a conibear um, body grip death trap made by Duke. So when I come out here tomorrow and I'm checking my traps, this will be one of them I check. And if I get an animal that sets that off, boom, instant death. So again, like I was saying earlier, if you, if you shoot them, with a 22 or an air rifle, you aim right between their eyes, you shoot them right in the brain, boom, it's, it's all she wrote. It's very quick, it's very humane, it's very ethical. Same with this, boom. You know, it'd, it'd be almost like a human walking. You ever seen um, when a, a, a huge dumpster or, a, or a, a piano falls on somebody directly? I mean, it hits them directly. They don't even know what hit them. They're gone in are up in heaven before they even realize, before they even realize what happened, before they even feel anything. So they'll be in raccoon heaven before they even feel anything. It's the first, no. 
This is the second time I've ever even used this trap, so I'm excited. Hopefully it will yield good results. Hopefully this is a used raccoon path. I could actually, you know what I could do? Is put a little bit of scent on here, just to pique their curiosity. Let me see. Fair advantage. Advantage human. Anyway, I love it out here. It's a great day. It's January 27th, 28th, something like that. And it's a great day. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be a trapper. And I am an unapologetic trapper. I am proud to be a trapper. I'm proud to be out here doing this. I'm helping sort of clean up nature. I'm helping the uh, population of raccoons flourish and thrive and be a healthier um, community because, like I said, if you get too many raccoons, then they face problems with starvation and um, overpopulation leads to disease. The same reason they, they manage deer, you know, where they give you a certain number of deer tags, they monitor it. They monitor deer populations and Speaking of deer and deer hunting, um, I, I, you know, part of me, I know I'm preaching to the choir because if you were not into any of this, you probably wouldn't even be watching this video. But if you are um, watching this video and you're not really into this and you don't really understand the mindset and how could somebody be so cruel and all that, you're doing a service to wildlife. When you shoot an animal, think about when a deer is shot with an arrow or a bullet, think about the other ways that that animal would have died. Think about how a majority of elk and um, caribou and deer and gazelle and all these animals, think about how they die. Do you think that there's a, a deer retirement home, a deer nursing home? Do you think nature becomes any less brutal the older and weaker that this animal gets. Us humans, when we get old, we get older, we get weaker, we become feeble, we're not able to fend for ourselves, and there are places set up. We either have family members that take care of us, or they're assisted living, nursing home type situations, and we want to live as long as we can. Well, the animals don't have that luxury, so what happens when they get old, or if they get weak, if they get diseased, if they get injured, they usually die a horrible death and it's very slow. And then there's coyotes too that will eat baby deer. Would, would, you, would you rather, if you were a baby deer, would you rather get hit with a bullet and an arrow or would you rather have your hindquarters ripped apart from you piece by piece while you're still alive by a coyote or, or any other creature that feeds upon them? A mountain lion. <clears throat> mountain lions are usually a little more in, in human ethical because they usually at least kill make sure their animals are dead first but coyotes are savage they don't give a crap um, so they die of disease they die of starvation they die of exposure these are all very slow horrible deaths and if you're not shot by an arrow or a bullet this is how you will die you will die a slow miserable death it's just the way nature is it's cruel it's unfair but it's the way nature is so, in looking at that, I think every time we shoot an animal, um, we're doing a, a service because we're helping out the population and we're giving this animal a much cleaner, uh, quicker, more instantaneous death than any other way that they could die. Plus, we're putting meat on our table, you know. So... We'll see. We'll see how this works. I put this before. I put this in a spot where I thought for sure it was a funnel where animal action was happening, where you have to go this way. But we'll see. This looks like a path to me. It looks like a path of a small... This this trap is unforgiving, though. It will catch any animal that goes through there. Raccoon, possum, anything. 
any other critter that's out here that can stick its head in there, if it can fit its head in that little hole there, it's a goner. You know what I didn't do? You can watch me do this. I didn't put a tag on this one to, to let to recognize that it is my trap. This little tag here, you can special order these. It, it says Virginia DGIF, the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. It has customer ID number, and then it has the number, and then it says trapper ID number. It has the permanent trapper ID number that I was assigned for my state, and that will be my permanent ID number as long as I'm a resident here in Virginia for the rest of my life. The reason they did that is because before that, before they did that, you had to put your, your full name, address, I think your phone number and everything on your, on your tags. And if you're some kind of wacko nut job or like anti-hunting or anti-trapping, then you're given this wacko all this personal information and he can harass you, he can, uh, he'll know where you, your phone number is, where you live. I think this is great because the only people that this number means anything to is the, and, and all they're going to check up on is to make sure you are a legally licensed trapper, that your license isn't expired, that you're trapping in the right location with the right bait, using the right kind of traps. I think it's wonderful. you got to be real careful with these con bears. You do not set them anywhere that uh, a small dog good. So now I am I am going to be legally held accountable. If somebody some crazy reason, you have to have your, there's a leash law in Virginia so I would have a good defense but if somebody's walking their dog and they let their dog get this far out, there's no path, there's no human path back here but if they have their dog off of a leash um, and they're, they're their dog wanders and goes through here, boom, small dog, and I kill it. My trapper ID number's on there. And this, the owner of the dog is going to find the dog dead and look up that, and guess what, I'm going to be held responsible. So it's up to me to make the right decision and make sure that I don't put this trap anywhere, and this is public land. Anybody could legally walk through here. These, these traps are made primarily and, and much smarter and safer to use them on private land. That way you don't have to worry about it. You won't be legally responsible. Uh, you won't be held accountable because this person and or this dog is trespassing. I'm just taking a chance here and putting it on public access land, which you are legally allowed to trap on, that a dog won't go through here. So anyway, that's it. Uh, whew, man, so that's trapping for today. I'm sorry we didn't catch anything. But uh, even if we did, I'm not going to put the cool shot on video because that just upsets too many people. If you want to know how that's all done, watch a different video or just you know, get a mentor. Get somebody that can help you out and teach you that because that's just way too controversial. So let's see, where's that trap? There it is, boom. Animal walks through there, and that, to me, that is a well-defined path right there. All right, I got all my supplies. You always may want to make sure when you carry your bag of crap in here with all your, your bait and your tools of the trade, you don't leave anything behind. Every hunter, fisherman, and trapper should leave the area better than when they got there. You don't leave any trash behind. I am I'm not a fan of that. I will not hunt with you. I will not fish with you if you litter, if you poach, meaning if you don't have a license, an up-to-date current license specific for whatever you're doing, then you're a poacher and I don't want to have anything to do with you. If you're just coming along and tagging along, 
with me as a buddy or something, that's fine. But you're not going to hunt or trap or fish unless you have a license. I'm a big supporter and believer in that and a greer. Wow, we've been going over an hour. All right, I think that's about it. I don't have anything else to say. I've imparted, I have imparted a lot of information upon you. So that's raccoon trapping. That's, that's a day with me checking my traps. I didn't get anything today. But tomorrow's a new day, and I can keep doing this every day until it rains. And when it rains, I need to come out here and either pull my traps or reset them all. Because, and then when, if that happens, you see, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for us to get a rain so all my dog food swells up and it's pretty much useless. And I have to reset all the traps. And that's when I know it's going to rain, then I'm going to be at home cooking up some bacon grease and coating my next batch of dog food with some delicious smelling, semi-water resistant new bait. And uh, you know, another smart thing to do if you're a trapper is to use an app so you can keep track of where you are in the woods, where exactly you place your traps. There's a GPS app that I use called Onyx. ONX and it is just absolutely awesome. It's wonderful. I use that. And there's also the, like the horse tape that you can carry. I have some of that in my bag somewhere. And you can tie that around uh, the, the tree nearest to wherever your trap is, and that can help you spot your traps a lot quicker. So all these traps are good to go. They have all been either reset or didn't need to be reset, but they're still full of bait. So that's trapping. I love to engage in healthy um, debate or, or conversation or, or, like I said, helpful comments, tips, tricks, anything like that, questions you may have, leave them in the comments. I'll put this up on YouTube so you can, you can do that. I'll put it on Facebook, too. <clears throat> anyway, thanks for coming along with me on the trap line. I'll go ahead and end this video now.